Hi everyone, uh, Fos Mohamed Shah with you. Uh, our lecture today is about uh, organic ranking cycle for uh, uh, ours family. It's um, some kind of four units, R245, uh, R1234, and R1233. Uh, first of all, before you you begin working on your uh, model. Uh, you have to open MATLAB first, then go to your destination folder from here or your working folder. Don't open it from desktop. So this is my drive. My I go to my destination folder from here, and this is my uh, own working folder. Yes, this one. So and click here and try to sort by name and group by type. This is very important. And now, as you can see here, this is your folder content. This is your folder contents, your uh, uh, important files, uh, figures, uh, functions. Uh, don't don't try to uh, remove any uh, uh, kind of these uh, uh, files. And this is your uh, 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 files, operating files. Uh, we have a single point or infinity working this is both of these uh, files can work in dynamic mode but this is controlled dynamic mode so let's begin from the first one just double clicking here and uh, okay this is our main cycle double clicking on your mother block you can find some uh, uh, documentation anyway so this is uh, uh, the main cycle it's organic regenerative cycle it's about a uh, uh, heat source for for, uh, for the evaporator uh, uh, unit uh, or we can consider this boiler heat exchanger something like this steam generation anyway so we have here this is organic ranking cycle and this is a heat source some 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 kind you can attach this to a solar field gas turbine cycle you can attach it to uh, attach it to a waste heat uh, or process heat it's up to your design so uh, the input uh, stream for for uh, for the evaporator from the hot source is already known. Uh, it's exhaust waste heat exhaust in uh, at temperature. I'm considering that this is a, a, a waste heat from uh, any type of uh, thermal process. And we have here uh, expander or uh, gas turbine and so steam turbine. As, and, and we have here a uh, recuperator unit okay for regeneration a uh, condenser and the stream outlet from the condenser towards the bump will be uh, bumped back again to the through the uh, recuperator unit order to again much heat before uh, going to uh, the evaporator cycle order to reduce the load on uh, the heat source okay uh, simply that's uh, our uh, main cycle we are going to select between three different types R1233, 1234, 245 working flows. Let's go inside. As you can see here, you can uh, simply select between uh, uh, three uh, uh, types of working flows. Suppose I would like to uh, working on the first one. Okay, set your simulation time into zero because this is a single point uh, solution. Okay, there is no need to go for dynamic or uh, infinity mode. Okay, and you have to assign some, this is your operating conditions, by the way, this is your operating conditions. I have to be aware about uh, operating range of my temperatures, saturation temperature, and this is maximum allowable temperature uh, per working fluids is superheat okay and this is your saturation temperature we have to assign some inputs uh, by the way uh, for, uh, before going in details uh, be remember that by clicking in this is your model browser this is your model browser suppose i need to go to the, as you can see here evaporator turbine recuperator condenser and bump so you can surf inside from here you can surf inside through here. Just one click on the side menu here. You can, this is evaporator. As you can see here, here are your inputs and here are your outputs. And suppose I would like to reform this, for example, let's go inside a uh, uh, cost analysis block. Okay. As you can see here, 
uh, these are your inputs and we have here your outputs okay just double this is your process code this is your function so for all this is uh, the function of the bump as you can see here inputs and outputs and uh, condenser this is a plate heat exchanger condenser okay recuperate unit inputs and uh, outputs let's go for for example just one example uh, double clicking on cost analysis here okay okay as you can see this is your function name it's named by cost you can change this if you'd like and you have here uh, your uh, inputs and your outputs suppose I would like to add another equation or add another parameter in order to affect the output suppose I would like to uh, for example let's add uh, uh, for example a specific power consumption maybe specific power consumption parameter and you have to separate it by a column this one or semicolon I, I can't remember the difference okay colon you can uh, do this so if you save this one and uh, go outside back again you will find that you add uh, another uh, signal so if you are going to attach uh, this parameter you can type it 1.23 for example okay you can name it as uh, a parameter specific about consumption okay but if you name it, uh, uh, if you name that as, as a parameter, you have to assign this from out, uh, outside. I will show you how. So if you go inside here, there's a, a orange uh, underline, uh, word underline, um, uh, hint that you have to assign this in you. You have to use this one. This is an input. So suppose I would like to say uh, specific power consumption, kilowatt. Uh, uh, for example, uh, kilogram, kilowatt hour per uh, kilogram of working fluids. So uh, let's see, um, for example, U output is equal to specific power consumption, uh, for example, uh, multiplied by operating hours, for example, and semicolon. Saving so we add here a parameter as a u so we have to put it here as an output so u i'm sorry u and semicolon so we have here uh, this one let's go outside and see so as you can see here we have here output as a u so if you change this if you change this one it will affect on uh, your your parameter okay let's go here for the cost and that's it i'm trying to uh, add a value for a specific bulk consumption or a parameter that i have added now so just right click here okay i forgot to inform you that this this entire uh, uh, program is running within a four iterator so uh, it solve itself it uh, it always rectify itself this is entire a hidden loop okay just right click here and going to the mask and edit mask okay let's go for this is documentation about uh, your uh, model okay and let's go here this is your parameter suppose i need to add a, a, another parameter let it be a uh, specific bar consumption is it edit or uh, the checkbox or uh, radio button or what is dial slider it's up to your design so suppose i need uh, i will remove this i'm sorry suppose it's a slider so i already specific bar consumption a kilowatt hour per uh, kilogram for example and i have to name it a specific bar consumption and give it a range for from zero up to uh, 10 for example and my value is one let's go here click ok go inside so it will take this value it uh, okay if you just double clicking here you will find your specific bar consumption and you can control it by your mouse cursor or by uh, keyboard left or right okay 
3.6 go inside drag this one attach this one okay if you hit run you will uh, find the same values that you have assigned now let's hit run and see okay and just taking some time for uh, loop okay it, it gives us the same value because we assigned this from outside block and this is output related to your specific bulk consumption suppose I, I would like to remove this I have to go inside remove uh, the cause of course removing specific bulk consumption and removing this one because there is no need for it and saving and you will find everything will return it to its original uh, uh, case Let's adjust our uh, our inputs. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be a little bit organizing organizer. I'm organizing myself. Okay, remove this one because it will give us an error or unconnected uh, parameter. I'm sorry. okay and so this is our original case uh, we have returned it back to it okay so uh, let's go inside and I'm trying to um, adjust my inputs related to my uh, parameter let's begin from here from uh, evaporator just double click you have to assign some inputs uh, we have some uh, uh, inputs such as uh, design tab performance and operating condition for performance it's the effectiveness of, of your evaporator this is a design model so are seeking the, uh, the calculations of your area of your flow rate so i have to assign uh, effectiveness normally in um, around for heat exchanger most of heat exchanger around 0 0.8 uh, 0 0.7 0 0.75 something like this and uh, this is your design what is your uh, tubes shell diameter it's up to your uh, a design you can assign this and examine your uh, your results let's go for operating conditions uh, we have ambient temperatures this is for exergetic calculations suppose it's 50 degrees Celsius uh, or your this is your reference temperature okay this is your reference temperature and we have here um, this is the heat source let's emphasize control plus okay control plus in order to emphasize this is your i suppose that i have a waste gas and uh, or waste heat and waste heat has a top uh, temperature uh, range from 100 to 200 surely you can increase the range let's see how can we increase the range just right click here going to the mask uh, okay edit mask returning back again to barometer and you will find here your uh, uh, waste gas inlet exhaust temperature and you will find you just click one click and you'll find minimum and maximum here so we can increase as, as a maximum suppose it's 250 degrees Celsius and hit apply and okay so if you double clicking here you will realize this uh, 250 degrees Celsius. suppose I have a uh, uh, waste heat temperature up to 135 degrees Celsius coming from the heat source and this will uh, uh, and it has uh, uh, heat capacity specific capacity for your gases suppose it's 1.5 normally for west uh, west gases this is assigned this is the information about the, uh, the incoming source later you can attach uh, this source or you can simulate the source it's up to your design and we have here uh, a bench temperature bench temperature is to assign the difference between uh, the hot and the affected uh, temperature uh, for uh, for the organic rank cycle. this temperature is uh, your evaporator temperature this is a vapor outlet temperature uh, so i am supposing that it's uh, less than five from the uh, the exhaust uh, temperature you can uh, uh, change the range it's up to your design I am just suppo suppose this as an example. So be expected that your te bench temperature it should be 
130 degrees Celsius because we have to subtract 5 degrees Celsius and be, be aware that your range is from 100 because we are using this one from 100 uh, the maximum range for saturation is 151 uh, uh, and superheat temperature is 225 this is your superheat temperature okay and let's assign for uh, turbine is okay turbine power is responsible for your load what is your load you are going to choose suppose i need uh, 500 uh, kilowatt of power my generator efficiency is 95 uh, percent turbine efficiency normally between 0.8.85 ambient temperature or reference temperature is uh, 15 uh, degrees Celsius. that's enough so this is your load this is your you can control your load, load flow from here because this is very important the cycle is trying to telling us uh, is you is uh, uh, what is your design aspects under the, the a specific load you have to assign so uh, suppose i'm going for 500 kilowatt of power okay okay let's go here okay for recuperator this is intermediate unit so we we need also uh, 15 degrees Celsius for reference temperature effectiveness because it's uh, 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 a, a heat exchanger you can deal it you can click here and go inside here as you can see double clicking this is your code for recuperator as you can see before uh, this is output recuperator function and this is these are your inputs as you can see this is a code representing your uh, uh, your cycle your process uh, you, as you can see there's a caption for each uh, uh, step there is no problem at all okay you can copy it you can uh, you can just uh, control a and control c and copy it and use it in into your uh, uh, work let's go for condenser units suppose i have uh, this is plate heat exchanger so I have to assign some uh, it is uh, a little bit uh, complicated this is a little bit co complicated uh, model so we have here a fouling factor normally in this range uh, heat exchanger effectiveness point, uh, point 0.80 uh, material thermal conductivity plate thickness plate gaps between plates um, I, I i already demonstrated that before in a, a specific uh, youtube video by the way don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel okay and we have here number of plates you can uh, uh, control this of course and let's go for condenser temperature we have condensation temperature uh, as you can see by the way we uh, assign to a very important parameter here uh, we have upper limit just one between exhaust temperature and uh, bench temperature because this is evaporator temperature okay and the lower uh, temperature this is your condenser temperature okay so you can control this uh, as you can see here or condenser temperature this is uh, or condenser pressure okay uh, cooling water temperature this is a cooling water responsible for cooling uh, because uh, your because your uh, plate heat exchanger is two main working fluid uh, organic fluid versus uh, water uh, stream fluid uh, salinity yes salinity ambient temperature i am stuck myself at uh, i'm sorry at 15 degrees celsius Okay, salinity. Is it seawater or cooling water or pure water or distillate water? It's up to salinity. Okay, uh, it is in uh, kilogram uh, per kilogram ratio. So we have, if it is, uh, for example, uh, saline water by uh, 45,000 ppm, you have to divide it by uh, 1 million in order to uh, uh, bring it to kilogram per kilogram as a ratio. So I uh, suppose I, I have a distilled water or pure water in order to preserve my uh, heat exchanger. So there is no need for uh, saline water. It's up to your design. Any cooling water temperature, suppose it's 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. Okay. In order to cool down that. Uh, be aware that this one should be less than this one. 
okay? Because of the cooling, this is a cooling effect. There's no meaning to uh, uh, more than this one. Okay, and we have here bumping unit. For bumping, we just need uh, ambient temperature for our reference temperature and bumping efficiency around 0 0.7, 0 0.75, 0 0.8, no more than this. Uh, okay, saving your uh, model, okay, and hit, uh, hit run and see our results. Okay, finished. As you can see here, these are your outputs for exhaust temperature from 135 it's uh, dropped down uh, from the evaporator drop down to 71 and this is your uh, vapor in salby this is your vapor in salby which should be uh, uh, go toward it's your turbine unit entropy okay pressure this is the pressure maximum pressure okay at uh, temperature 160 degrees celsius superheat waste gases uh waste gases flow rate <coughs> i'm sorry this is your waste gases flow rate so uh, you can send this to data inspector okay by clicking here okay and heat evaporator area number of tubes and tube lens uh, uh, exchange the structure rate okay and you can change this based on your diameter of your unchilled diameter uh, so it's fully controllable from here as you can see here you can change your uh, diameter and chill diameter okay it will control your uh, lens and uh, number of tubes for turbine unit for 500 kilowatt of power we need this one we need 9.5 kilogram per second as a flow rate and outlet in salby this is outlet in salby from the turbine and this is your uh, input in salby as you can see the difference this is 344 and this one is uh, uh, 291 okay and this is very important your outlet temperature from the turbine unit okay it's about 60 degrees celsius for capurator, as you can see here, uh, let's go here. Okay, emphasize this is your area, area, um, uh, thermal power, and this is your evaporator thermal power, as I think, uh, in the second version. In the second version, okay, for capurator, okay, a reversibility rate, okay, and oh, this is very important. This is T bumper capillator out. This is the stream outlet from a uh, capillator which comes from, uh, which is coming from your bump. Let's go here and see from. Okay, this one, T bumper capillator out. This is stream, and this is stream is T bumper capillator in. So we have in and outlet. We have to uh, to, to consider uh, both of this one, both of these uh, streams. I'm sorry. And let's go here. So this one is a uh, outlet before going to the evaporator. This value is um, intended to go towards your evaporator. And this is in Salby outlet recuperator uh, temperature, T recuperator. Oh, this is for condenser. This is a hot side uh, condenser um, steam temperature. This stream temperature is still in uh, stream uh, in steam conditions. And this is it's in Salby, and this is in Salby for uh, for bumble, bumble stream. We have recuperator stream, as you can see T and H, and we have here bump stream T and H. Okay, let's go for condenser. Uh, let's see what we have here. Condenser thermal power, uh, cooling water flow rate. This is your cooling water flow rate. It's around uh, based on your temperature and cooling effect, salinity effect. Just double clicking here, you will find your code here represented for blade heat exchanger. And we can uh, discover some outlet cooling temperature is fr from 20 degrees Celsius, it raised up to uh, 36 or 30, no, near, uh, nearly 30, 37 degrees Celsius in salby of the uh, cooling water outlet. Uh, pressure of the condenser, this is condenser pressure uh, in salby of uh, hot stream for, of the condenser outside and uh, overall heat transfer coefficient kilowatt per me, uh, square meter 
degree Celsius, area of your uh, plate heat exchanger, uh, height of your, the plates, length of your plates, and excess destruction in minus because we have here uh, input minus outputs, as you can see here. Uh, you can control this by increasing your or adding here the thermal. Uh, let's add uh, the condenser thermal power, thermal heat transfer. It's Q condenser and COVID. Let's go here and I'm trying to add this one here. Uh, control V and, and plus, let's plus this one. Okay, and saving. Uh, okay. Okay, and hit run again, it will give us, uh, it depending on your exergetic uh, concept, okay, uh, let's go for the bump, bumping power, it's nearly 18 kilowatt of power, we are going to consume, uh, bump invincibility, outlet in salve from the bump, raised up a little bit, temperature raised up a little bit, okay, and cost analysis, so for cost analysis we need to discover, this is hourly cost for the bump, condenser, uh, uh, recuperator, steam turbine, surely it will consume more, more cost, cause more power, and um, this is levelized power cost, we can add more levelized power cost, total hourly cost, this is very important, this is your total hourly cost uh, uh, by your uh, system. Uh, let's go for, uh, again, uh, let's go here okay enough for this one let's go for dynamic one let's go for dynamic one I would like to discover as don't forget to you can collect your result from here you can drag and drop here this is evaporator area this is uh, plate heat exchanger area uh, you can all parameters you will find it here in salby of hot outlet hot stream from the condenser Okay, uh, levelized power cost. You can use this if you'd like. Okay, let's go for, you'll find your, um, all uh, uh, correlations are attached here. I forget to inform you. As you can see here, if you, let's clear little, clear, and CLC. Okay, and suppose I would like to discover uh, the physical properties of for you on this one. Let's drag and drop here. It will open here. Uh, okay. As you can see, this is your steam table. This is liquid, vapor, and superheat. So you can correlate. You can change. You can do what you, whatever you would like. Okay. It's the same for this one. 100, 1,000. Uh, uh, or 12 double CD uh, for you, okay. You'll find uh, liquid phase, vapor phase, and you'll find uh, uh, temperature, pressure, uh, pressure in megapascal, density, and salby, specific volume, uh, uh, entropy, uh, latent heat, uh, heat capacity, uh, at constant volume, constant pressure, plant number, dynamic viscosity, and thermal conductivity, all of these parameters are very important. And this is your superheat uh, uh, table. Table, I'm sorry. This you can use this and correlate your uh, correlations. Okay, let's go for the second one. Let's, this is dynamic mode. Let's hit run and see. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just okay. So this one, I suppose that I have a, a specific time. You can use this for two years, for one second, for one day, one hour, one, it's up to your uh, simulation. So I adjusted my simulation time into hours. Let's begin from, uh, uh, let's go for here. Our, from our uh, starting hour one, and finishing hour is to, uh, uh, 24. Variable step, this is my step size, okay and hit okay okay so now i uh, there is no effect for some parameters there is no effect for some parameters as you can see here i adjusted this to work uh, um, uh, within you can say a self-controlled model it can control itself and rectify itself okay 
let's begin from the evaporator suppose i would like to see the effect of a, a, a exhaust temperature okay this is very important just this one I, I would like to just on an example so i i removed this one this this is your uh, this is your exhaust temperature so i removed it and give it a comment as you can see here click here and comment out okay so there is no effect if you double click here and you tried to if you try to change this there is no effect at all there's no effect because i already committed it and i replaced it with this one this one is a signal builder so going here for sources i need to create a control signal there's no i will not use my cursor key or my uh, my keyboard i just would like to control this uh, uh, automatically so this is your signal builder so i dropped it here and control i to swap it uh, okay and i attached it here i may i may i reformed it to this one and i give it a background color format background color red one okay red one okay and uh, you can name it as t uh, exhaust in degrees Celsius okay like this one I'm just showing you what I I have did before I have done before and uh, this one double clicking emphasize so this is your signal uh, we have to add to change this one we have to change your signal it's up to your uh, design suppose I have a fluctuation from my uh, my exhaust temperature coming from the source so I have to create this and leave it to the simulator in order to run it uh, from uh, by itself so first of all go to uh, here and change your time limitation it's from one you have to assign it as the, sa the same as your uh, simulator time up to 24 okay okay now i have to control the signal so let's go for the signal replace with custom signal suppose i have uh, open bracket at time one space up to uh, 24 i need this one i need to control from uh, 130 degrees Celsius up to 135 uh, degrees Celsius and hit apply you realize this is your uh, but these are two just uh, just two uh, two points so suppose I need to add just uh, uh, hold shift and click on I'm sorry hold shift and add point at a specific time at every hour okay and you can control this if you would like now i am adjusting uh, my uh, input you can go up a little bit go down a little bit as you can see there is some kind of fluctuation randomly fluctuation in order to if you adjust it as a smooth line you will get a, a smooth results as you can see here let's adjust it as a smooth if you would like okay so I did that before, so there is no need to continue this. I will remove this one. Okay. Okay, we have we are here. Double uh, click. Okay. This is I, I created this one. I created this one. Uh, uh, we step is twenty four uh, each hour, so you can uh, smooth it if you'd like. You can control it uh, based on your uh, results. Okay, based on your. Uh, input parameters you can control it uh, whatever you would like okay let's go here it's around uh, okay rise up a little bit okay okay let's go up a little bit for 135 and okay this is a line this is controlling your input okay saving and closing this one and uh, let's go for uh, this is for evaporator okay and uh, let's go for turbine unit okay for turbine unit, I, I fluctuate the, I did the same 
for the turbine unit, I fluctuated the, uh, the, the power. This is the power range depending on uh, the load from the user. Suppose there is up and down in your uh, power demand based on the uh, power consumption from the user. So I created this randomly. And for capacitor, we don't have uh, maybe the effectiveness if, if you would like to uh, configure it. For condenser, yes, we have here any cooling water. You can uh, you can randomly uh, adjust this one, and condenser temperature. I randomly uh, controlled it. It's from uh, maybe the lower range was in 30 uh, 30 degrees Celsius up to 30 uh, 34 something like this. Okay. And let's go for bombing unit. As you can see here, uh, uh, no need for the bomb. Okay, cost analysis. You can yes, I adjusted the the, uh, uh, the hourly cost based on uh, the, uh, the simulation time. So you can, if you would like, uh, to you can add clock. It will take the same time of your simulation. It's from zero up to twenty. Uh, from 1 up to uh, 24 this one okay okay let's saving going here outside here okay this is our let's hit run and see our results on our data book for the first one for the first working fluid let's hit run and see okay time okay it has finished let's go here inside click on data inspector and let's go here and see okay these are uh, my outputs you can add more um, uh, outputs if you'd like by just clicking on the streams suppose you just click on the stream for example here for example here uh, just one click here and select uh, stream selected to data inspector or you can highlight this one let's go here and type double click on the signal and type i bump in kilowatt okay and put it down here okay just to highlight the signal and going data inspector and stream selected to data inspector you realize there's a small square here uh, to visualize your output okay and i'm sorry i have to let's begin from back again okay suppose i I would delete all and uh, make another run. Okay, let's saving and okay, let's uh, make another run. Okay, let's go to uh, log into data inspector and see. Okay, uh, you can. This is a levelized power cost. You can adjust your format. It's from zero up to uh, 0.02 for example uh, 0.03 0.1 i'm sorry yes this is a uh, time formatting okay let's go for uh, uh, total hourly cost okay total hourly cost the same you can do the same let's go, uh, evaporator turbine the fluctuation in your turbine Cost is decreased because based on your uh, surely uh, inputs, uh, you can uh, bombing. I'm sorry, you can remove this one. And this is outlet exhaust temperature. You can adjust it as from to uh, 100. Uh, yes, from 60 to uh, 70. That's formatting. Okay, from 65. Okay, fluctuation. Uh, vapor pressure, uh, mass rate of your waste gases, evaporator uh, power, organic ranking cycle, mass flow rate, uh, outlet turbine temperature, condenser, condenser fluctuation, um, bombing power, uh, outlet bomb temperature. Okay. Enough. You can add more, more slots if you would like. You can add more slots from here. Is this enough for me? Okay. Uh, let's close this one and try to um, another working fluid in order to compare. So let's let's uh, hit run and see. 
let's hit run and see yes okay let's go inside so we can are going to compare our runs now uh, this is the first run okay this is your first run and we have his second run we are, the, the, uh, we are going to compare the same uh, uh, terms t exhaust out outlet exhaust temperature okay you can realize the difference between R245 and R1233 uh, steam turbine hourly cost nearly the same uh, vapor pressure I think there is a difference difference in pressure um, gases flow rate evaporator what is evaporator here I think it's a condenser recuperator yes evaporator power organic ranking cycle what is organic ranking cycle mass flow rate yes this one um, you realize the difference organic ranking cycle lower in, in, in organic ranking cycle condenser uh, and, uh, and, and energy pump, bumping power and bump, uh, bumping outlet bump temperature nearly the same nearly the same okay it's from you can for adjust the format from zero okay up to 40 degrees Celsius or from 30 yes up to 40 degrees Celsius there's a difference okay let's close this one I'm going to another one uh, switch okay and hit apply hit run and see our results uh, let's go inside back again so I, I can extract this figures outlet uh, for, uh, for as a plot uh, exhaust temperature for the third working fluid exhaust this is the third run run number three as you can see here yes outlet temperature below the first one uh, turbine uh, turbine uh, what is the turbine yes steam turbine nearly the same um, uh, vapor pressure I think there is a difference yes this one the third one is huge and uh, gases gases flow rate evaporator in organic ranking cycle uh, interesting and um, condenser condenser okay working bump okay and we have here out the bump temperature okay so suppose I would like to send you to a figure click here send you to a figure okay you can send it to a figure and now you can click to properties and we are going to control this okay you can control your figures from here let's you can change the caption you can change a uh, uh, canvas uh, uh, okay the white you can add uh, the time for example hold shift for all and uh, click on uh, time domain you can change the time suppose it's time uh, for example a uh, day because that's 24 hours and you can use this if you'd like uh, uh, to be used in your uh, work adoption uh, finally, I would like to thank you very much for your interest in our models. Don't forget to like, share, uh, and uh, subscribe. Uh, thank you very much.